six months since I started my YouTube channel. Gosh, it's really tough. And I thought that I would share some hints and tips and things that I learned along the way. Number one, never delete a bunch of videos. I did that within my first couple of months. And after I did that, what I noticed was that all the videos that were doing relatively well suddenly bombed and hardly anyone was viewing them compared to before. So I don't know what happened with the algorithm, but deleting videos that people weren't watching, that were public, seemed to have an impact on those that were doing relatively well. So don't delete videos. I'll probably want to delete this one as soon as I've uploaded it. Uh, you know, it really doesn't help. Number two, I changed my YouTube channel name after about three months and that was actually fine. So the first name that I had was That Girl Goes Digital and that was based upon my background of being a shopkeeper and I closed my bricks and mortar store in March this year at which point I thought I'd start doing YouTube full time alongside running my online shop. So I kept the online side of the business. So that girl goes digital was that transition. As you see, it needed a really long explanation and as such, it wasn't particularly catchy. People couldn't remember it when I was chatting with them face to face. I soon realized, okay, I thought this name was clever. It's not. And I made it much more simple and followed a format that seems to do quite well for people. My first name plus explores. And I kept it quite vague because I don't want to be pigeonholed into where I make videos and I want to make guides about places that I enjoy visiting and share my passion for those. And rather than being specific to a particular region, I thought I'd go with Explores. It's what I like to do. It could have been Nicola Potters. I mean, everyone thought I was making pottery. So, you know, Explores was the best thing. So yeah, changing my YouTube name partway through really helped and then I noticed that more people started subscribing also because I think there was a decent number of videos on my channel at that point I started producing them weekly it became clear what the channel was about you know people say don't change your YouTube channel name for me it was fine tip number three and I don't know how I feel about this but from my personal experience when I started producing travel guides I started off producing them around Italy, in Sicily and Tuscany, and I found that those videos were doing quite well, and um, I was building a bit of a following, and my audience was predominantly people based in America and Italy, um, people that wanted to travel around the region or had a connection with it, and um, it was sort of steadily growing, and then I was back in the UK in the summer, so switched what I was doing and started making travel guides predominantly around Somerset. And what I noticed was that initially those views absolutely plummeted. Um, people weren't watching the Italy videos anymore. Um, it's almost like YouTube didn't know to carry on showing those particular videos to that subset of audience and the new content. Um, he didn't know who to show it to. So now I've been producing UK videos for a while and um, those have gradually started to pick up but they really slumped initially. So for some reason changing the location of the travel guides really hasn't helped. Um, but I know that more broadly people do make travel guides around wider areas and it works for them. Personally I found that switching really did mess up the views on the first few videos that were doing quite well. Tip number four, and this might be one of the most controversial ones, is don't bother to tell anyone what you're doing in real life. And the reason for that is, you know, they may love you as a person, but you might not have exactly the same interests. Um, and quite frankly, they're just not interested in your YouTube channel. And so having them as a, as a subscriber and uh, persuading friends and family that don't necessarily ever watch YouTube to create an account and subscribe to your channel is a terrible mistake because they don't use the platform and they won't come back to watch it. It's terrible for your engagement. 
and I feel it had a really negative impact on my views initially because I wasn't getting the repeat views, they weren't coming back and using the platform because they just don't use it anyway. So don't ask your friends and family to subscribe to your YouTube channel. Completely pointless if they don't use YouTube as a platform. And like I say, I actually think it harms your channel and sends bad information to the algorithm because it's just telling people that you know your channel's not worth going back to. Don't send links to people on WhatsApp um, saying, oh, this is the video that I've created. I found by looking at the stats, they probably couldn't care less. <laughs> so don't force it onto people because it will ultimately hinder your success. And that's something I think is my biggest takeaway actually in the first six months. And it feels really sad saying it, um, but you're much better off just posting your content out there and trying just to let YouTube organically find the right kind of audience. That being said, are we on tip number four or five? Right, learn how to count. Um, sharing in the right place can be good. So for instance, there was a couple of local newspapers that contacted me after I created um, videos about the specific area that they covered and that was in Western Supermare and Burnham on Sea. And now those videos have been my most successful to date. And I think that's because it's, it's reaching out to people that are specifically interested in those niche subjects. Similarly, sharing to specific Facebook groups has been quite helpful sometimes, but it kind of depends on the vibe of the group. If it's really community orientated, then that can help. Um, get views on that particular video. Um, people won't necessarily bother to watch your other ones though, so I, again I'm in two minds about that because YouTube does seem to favour people that will come back and watch multiple videos and genuinely use the platform rather than someone that just sort of hopped, you know, and that's what the advertisers want isn't it, rather than someone that's just sort of come on to watch something specifically and then never comes back that's not that's not showing that any kind of loyalty to the platform and so is of lesser value. So those are the main takeaway things that I've learned. Um, I've also learned so much about the filming. Um, oh, my doorbell's going. Right, resident ghost, it sounds like I'm making it up. <laughs> this happened yesterday as well. The doorbell just decided to go part way through the morning. <laughs> You know, it would just be easier if I said that was a postman, wouldn't it? Um, but there you go. Um, anyway, I think I've probably waffled on enough now. If you are a subscriber to the channel, thank you so much. I really do appreciate it. It would be really helpful to hear your feedback because I did quit everything to start this channel um, and to run it alongside my retail platforms. Now, those retail platforms are the Bristol Shop, the Bath Art Shop, and Eclectic Gift Shop and you can find all kinds of manner of gifts on Eclectic Gift Shop, handmade jewellery, glass, um, lots of lovely greetings cards all designed and made in the UK. Um, the Bristol Shop and the Bath Art Shop those are souvenirs and art based around those cities. There's the doorbell again. <laughs> To everyone who subscribed today thank you so much i really do appreciate it um it'd be great to hear what you'd like to see more of because i'm torn in being pulled in loads of directions at the moment i have a lot of vintage footage that i want to go through that was my grandpa's that was filmed on an old cine camera and i'd like to go that so that's predominantly based around bristol in the southwest i think there's a bit of um, barry island and Places that he day tripped to during the 60s with my um, father and uncle um, and aunt. Um, so I have that to share. I also have a lot in the can around Bristol and the surrounding areas. And there's also quite a bit filmed around Sicily. So I'd be really interested to know what you'd like to see next. I'd also just like to say, yeah, thank you to everyone that comments. 
and a special thank you to uh, fellow YouTube creators that are also covering the southwest of England in a positive light. Um, and I really enjoy watching your channels. And those are Martin Pope, um, he's a fantastic filmmaker, and you can find lots of travel guides around the southwest of England on his channel. There's also Louise from Southwest Sundays. Um, she's been doing this for about three and a half years, um, posting each week, so there's an abundance of videos on her channel. There's also Richard from West Country Wanderings, who's been going around the same time as Louise. And lastly, um, Darren, um, Somerset Walking Man, um, who's been covering the area too. So shout out to all of you guys and um, to everybody else that's been supporting the channel. Thank you very much. Hi everyone. Thanks for joining me. If you'd like to see an update about my YouTube journey every six months, please do let me know in the comments below. Equally, let me know if you're not interested. Finally, if you'd like to watch my first video, I've made it live again so that you can see what I did before I started the YouTube channel. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, happy exploring!